Welcome forward to star 41 of our reflections. Only five more to go after this. Um, and then Mary's mantle will be complete with stars anyway. So anyway, the three words we're going to use today are temperance, loving and strong. So straight into the scripture. In everything do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. So if you want to pause the video there to give that some thought. And again, this is a very familiar piece of scripture, which we would have heard on numerous occasions. And it's very much potentially um, overquoted. If Well, I don't think you can overquote it, certainly. But it's certainly under acted upon and that's worth giving it some thought do we honestly in everything we do do to others as we would do or have them do to you so it's quite um an interesting one but in everything anyway so given the fact we've got these three words temperance loving and strong how do we use those three words to sort of help orientate ourselves through that and draw out new meaning? So that'd be quite interesting to sort of uh, play around with this one. So I'm going to start with uh, temperance. And you can certainly look up a, def a classical definition of that, but it is a virtue. And it one that allows us to live, it's a virtue that allows us to live, I think, in moderation. So it stops us being controlled by our desires or addictions or potential addictions or our selfishness. So in other words, you can control when you want to eat and how much you're going to eat and so forth. That's just one example. And therefore, temperance allows you to do that. So it's about living in moderation over anything, whether it's drink, food, lusts, etc., uh, spending money, wanting money, all your desires, and so, and so forth. So it stops us, so this temperance stops us from being a puppet to these attachments. And it allows us to detach ourselves from these attachments when we need to detach ourselves. Otherwise you can't do that. And therefore, if we haven't got temperance in any way, we were only be acting selfishly all the time and therefore you won't be free to actually be loving to other people and therefore in order for us to sort of uh, develop temperance we do need to be strong and it needs to be tested and then so actually if you apply those three words now to what we've just said too in everything do to others as you would have them do to you I think you've got to ask yourself, um, what do I want for me? And that's an interesting question. So some of the classic examples would be happiness, joy, peace, a good career, a good job, uh, a car, a house, a home, a family, a marriage, kids, uh, to be famous, successful. I mean, the list could go on, clearly. But whatever you put on your list, the implication here is that actually you are going to do your utmost best to ensure that other people achieve those things. So think about that. So we live in a world where we're encouraged to have high aspirations, but actually it's about getting ahead of the game. So it's about competition. Everything's about competition. So there's nothing wrong with aspirations, high aspirations, but without competition. And again, we could go into that a lot more here. So it is interesting. Um, so temperance, I suppose another way of looking at it is about sacrifice, voluntary sacrifice, because actually you want everyone else to achieve what you've just said you want to achieve and you will do your best for 
for them to have that. Now, do we do that? It's an interesting thought. However, if we were all doing that to each other, then we would all achieve it and a lot more. So that was interesting using those three words and it certainly helped bring out some different meaning to that bit of scripture. So with that, God bless.